listen, I'm not Dr. Umar, you know, so it's, it's hard for me to really to dissect and get and dive deep into the topic. Mrs. Menzel, do you blame the black community for taking issue with the fact that one of its most successful black men chose to go outside of the community for his spouse? Are you trying to tell me you don't understand why the black community had an issue with your privileged white Marion Tay Diggs? Very supportive of each other always. Of course. So excited for him. The thing that came into play more, I would say, and he's talked about it too, is the racial, interracial mm -hmm. aspect of it. Because we were never, when you're in the theater, like, it's just not a thing. Like, we right. all love each other and sleep with each other yeah. and best friends with whoever wants to be whatever sexual orientation. Well, I, I mean, the theater a, community. Yeah. But when you leave that cocoon, that bubble, and now in his case, he's people's, fit, you know, what is it? 50 most beautiful 50 most people. Beautiful. Or he's on the Which cover. I was on. 50 most he was beautiful on the cover of not. Essence uh -huh. and um, Ebony and being interviewed by all of these um, black journalists. And I think I think he had his own stuff to deal with with that. And it seemed like there was disappointment in the community mm. with him because he was married to some little A white, white Jewish, Jewish girl, yeah. girl from, <laughs> from some show that we don't even remember anymore. And so I took that on too, you know? Anyway, that's stuff that we had to we had to deal with. So it's less about being successful and more about just right. that kind of stuff. Do you do you think the pressure and the backlash because he was in an interracial marriage, do you think it affected him? Do you think it got to him? Did it affect his job where he wasn't able to do like something no. you said, being able to compartmentalize? You think he wasn't able to separate the two? I think he allowed the community to make decisions for him. He listened to the community say, you this prominent guy, because what they do is says right. that white person wouldn't, that lady wouldn't talk mm -hmm. to you if you weren't who you were. Whoa, well, hell, whoa, how whoa, do, whoa, how, whoa, 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 whoa. Did you hear what you just said? Yes. I'm would, saying the community, the community okay. would say mm -hmm. that white woman wouldn't talk to you if you weren't who you were. Well, I'm neither saying the community. that's how they look at it. Neither would the women in the community. I get that. The, 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 okay. Thank you. But yes, my sir. thing is, o o Ocho, why does why do, why do I have to live my life? You do mm -hmm. realize that when he, when Dr. King and Rosa Parks, mm -hmm. they were fighting for more than mm -hmm. your voting rights, more mm -hmm. than your fair housing, more mm -hmm. than your unemployment rights. Mm -hmm. It was the right to be able to choose a choice, right. just like abortion. That should be that should be between the woman and her mm -hmm. doctor. Right. Okay. Fine. Whatever. Whatever. That's mm -hmm. a woman. Mm -hmm. Okay. Shouldn't who I date, who I marry. Shouldn't mm -hmm. that be between me and my spouse? Right. Without outside external forces from either community? Right. Y'all don't have to live with them. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't have to feed us. Y'all don't have to take care of anything. Why mm -hmm. is it such a... That's what I don't understand. When I saw the, the criticism that Bronnie mm -hmm. was getting for taking a white young lady to the farm, mm -hmm. and I see some of these other guys, why does it upset you so much? If it doesn't cost you anything... Mm -hmm. If it doesn't take any money out of your pocket, if it doesn't put any money on your table, why are you upset at somebody? Because even though he's dating somebody outside the community, what makes you think if he was dating somebody in the community, it would be you? Mm, I don't know. It's, it's a it's a tough it's a tough it's it's a tough topic. It's very very um it can it can go one of two ways. You know, it can go south or it can go north. There's no in between. Listen, I'm not Dr. Umar, you know, so it's, it's hard for me to really to dissect and get and dive deep into the topic. But all I can see is and say is based on me and preference is I love everybody. I love all walks of life, yes. regardless of where you come from, regardless of your ethnicity, regardless of your background. You know, I'm, I'm able to to enjoy all circles. I can put myself in any environment and adapt to it. And for that, I think you know. It's really, a, but it's a, but it's but 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 it's committing us. yourself. It's us, yeah. Ocho, come on. It's I know, us. I know. But just having to say, you know what, stick to this and just block off everything else in life. I just, I, I don't know why they do it. You know, they they happy with athletes at, with, with athletes when it, basically when it comes to athletes, they say, well, once you get money, we always venture off and go date elsewhere. Outside, you know, outside they, of our race. Out, outside of our race. You know, once you get a little money, you start dating women that 
you actually wouldn't have access to and you know access to get well that's in in general in life and anything that you do yes. you never you want you never want to stay the same i mean that's just right. you, know, you go for what you like and that's just the the nature of the beast the way it's always been snow bunny shannon sharp and this is no disrespect to my big brother shannon sharp but snow bunny shannon sharp is added again with his pro snow bunny propaganda chad johnson ocho cinco chad johnson maybe we related maybe we not through the johnson dynasty i don't know but chad johnson much respect to chad he was a good wide receiver nothing but love and respect for shannon Nothing but love and respect for Chad. We want Terrell Owens to get well. I heard he was in a car accident. He was also pushing the black girls. Used to call me ugly propaganda. We're going to deal with that tonight because I'm a little tired of black men pushing. Black girls called me ugly in middle school. So I'm dating white women and giving them all my money in my 40s and 50s. I'm not quite buying that line of logic and reasoning but we're going to deal with it a little bit but we wish our brother terrell owens nothing but the best of health and a speedy recovery if he suffered any uh any um injuries as a result of the accident that he was in but chad and shannon had a conversation someone sent me the clip today while I was at the movies watching Killers of the Flower Moon, or I was on my way to the movies to watch Killers of the Flower Moon. And we're going to talk about that movie, a, a brief movie review within the context of deconstructing the ridiculous comments that was made by our brother Shannon Sharp and Chad Johnson. So brother Chad Johnson, you claimed my good brother. Brother Chad Johnson, you claim that love is love. Brother Chad said love is love. Ocho Cinco said love is love. So, Brother Chad, I have to ask you, my dear brother, if you believe love is love, why are most interracial marriages involving black men? If love is love, why are most interracial marriages involving black men? Why do most of them most of them generally consist of a black man with means and a non-black woman of lower means? If love is love, why do we see a consistent slant and disproportionality between black men and their non-black spouses? If love is love, shouldn't we find just as many non-black women of substance marrying black men of less substance? Why is it always black men of substance marrying non-black women of less than substance? Love is love. Love is political. Love is business. Or should I say marriage is political and marriage is business. Now, my brother, Chad, you cannot sit here and tell me, good brother, Chad Ocho Cinco Johnson. You cannot sit here and tell me that you are that naive, that politically uneducated, that socially inept to believe that white women are out here marrying rich black men because they love them. I think we know better, don't we? I think we know better. Have you not noticed being the superstar you are? Have you not noticed all the black athletes who were sued by their white wives as soon as they fell from grace in the entertainment or athletic realm? I remember when RG3 lost his notoriety and fame on the football field. I remember when RG3 lost his fame and notoriety on the football field. The first thing his snow bunny wife did was sue him. That's the first thing she did. And she didn't sue him for a little bit of money. She sued him for a large divorce settlement. We consistently see this. When Tiger Woods got divorced from his snow bunny, she took 50% of his wealth 
becoming a billionaire overnight. When he met her, she was a housemaid and she became a billionaire off of Tiger Woods. Don't tell me no love is love. Don't tell me no love is love. And when we talk about killers of the flower moon and we look at what interracial marriage did to the Osage nation of Oklahoma, I'm going to put some more bullets in your intellectual coffin. I'm going to put some more bullets in your intellectual coffin. I'm going to put some more bullets in your intellectual coffin. These white women ain't dating y'all because they love you. They dating you because you got money, Chad. And then you said, I'm going to get to Shannon in a minute. And this is in love. I ain't got no problem with Chad or Shannon as black men. I have problems with the decisions they make and the propaganda that they fake. Notice I said I got a problem with the decisions that they make and the propaganda that they fake. Why am I saying propaganda that they fake? Because Shannon Sharp knows better and Chad Johnson knows better. And they know these white women and these other non-black women are not marrying these black men because they love them. They're marrying them because they want the bag. Joel Embiid married a bunny. Do you really think she would have married his seven foot, six inch Cameroonian self if he wasn't a multi-millionaire? Who's the point guard from the Atlanta Hawks? Uh, Trey, uh, Trey, Trey, Trey Young, he just married a bunny. You think these white women marrying these athletes because they love them? Half the time, they only dated them for a year or two. They marrying them for the bag. And you see it with the high divorce rates of athletes and celebrities after they're no longer famous and popping. When they are no longer at the top of the charts, what is the first thing these white women do? They file for divorce and they take half. Then you said, Brother Chad, why we still stuck on this in 2023 is beyond me. Heavily melanated, dark skinned Chad Ochocinco Johnson said he don't understand why we still stuck on this in 2023. He don't understand why we still stuck on this in 2023. Brother Chad, can I ask you a question? Have you ever went to an Asian church, a Korean American church, a Chinese American church, a Japanese American church? Have you ever went to an Asian church and asked them why there's never no black people in there? Have you ever accused them of being stuck? Have you ever accused them of looking out for their best interests? Have you ever accused them of sticking to themselves? But when it comes to black men, when it comes to the black community looking out for our best interests, all of a sudden, we still stuck on this in 2023. My brother, Chad Johnson, can I ask you a question? Is police brutality a thing of the past or the present? Let me ask you that. Chad Ochocinco Johnson, is police brutality a thing of the past or the present when it comes to African people? Let me ask you another question, Brother Chad Ochocinco Johnson. Is mass incarceration of black men a thing of the past or a thing of the present? Let me ask you another question. Is ethnic cleansing, a.k.a residential gentrification of black people. Is that a thing of the past, Brother Chad Ochocinco Johnson, or is that a thing of the present? Brother Chad Ochocinco, let me ask you another question. If mass incarceration is a thing of the past and the present, if hangings are a thing of the past and the present, if police brutality is a problem of the past and the present, Chad Ochocinco Johnson, if every problem we ever had in America continues to be a problem for black people today in America, why are you asking us, are we still stuck on looking out for ourselves? Why don't you go ask Joe Biden? Why don't you go ask the U.S. Congress? Why don't you go ask the Supreme Court? Why don't you go ask the Democratic Party? Why don't you go ask the Republican Party why they still stuck on white supremacy? Ask them why they still stuck on white bigotry. Ask them why they still stuck on not giving black people reparations. Go ask them why they still stuck on mass incarceration. Go ask the police why they still stuck on murdering black people. See, my issue with you celebrities and entertainers, 
My issue with you celebrities and entertainers. My issue with you celebrities and you entertainers is you like to console your white slave masters. You like to make them real comfortable by acting like you don't understand what race is. Chad Johnson, you a dark skinned black man. Ain't no way in hell you're going to sit here and tell me you don't know a white supremacy. Shannon Sharp, you even darker than he is from Alabama, I think it is, or Georgia. There's no way in hell you ain't going to tell me that you don't know what white supremacy is. You two brothers were straight up cooning on that little clip I saw today. And then you went on and said, date who makes you happy. Chad Johnson. I'm going to come to Snow Bunny Shannon in a minute. I'm going to come to Snow Bunny Shannon. And Shannon Sharp, I challenge you to bring me on your podcast. Shannon Sharp versus the Prince of Pan-Africanism is Snow Bunny hopping in the best interest or the worst interest of the black community. I challenge Shannon Sharp to a debate on your podcast about interracial dating and interracial marriage. You and me on Club Shay Shay. What you going to do now, bro? What you going to do now? Me and you face to face on your podcast. Let's debate it. Shannon Sharp versus King Kong consciousness. Is Snow Bunny hopping detrimental to the black community or is it in the best interest of the black community? And you could have Terrell Owens up there because he be bunny hopping. You can have Chad Ocho Cinco up there. You can get all the Snow Bunny athletes you want. And let's sit down and have a respectable man-to-man -man conversation on the topic of bunny hopping in the black community. That's a direct challenge to Shannon Sharp. Put up or shut up. Put up or shut up. Them three Super Bowls can't save you from the intellectual execution you're going to get from the prince of Pan-Africanism. But let me continue. Let me continue. Let me continue. Chad Ochocinco, you said, date whoever makes you happy. Shannon, you also said, you just want people to be happy. Chad said, date who makes you happy. And Shannon said, I just want people to be happy. Chad said, date who makes you happy. And Shannon said, I just want people to be happy. Can I ask both of you brothers a question? Chad and Shannon, can I ask y'all a respectable question right now? Chad and Shannon, can I ask y'all a respectable question right now? Does the best interest of the black community, does that ever come across your minds when you're thinking about dating and sexing these white girls and non-African women? I just want to know. Because I keep hearing a whole bunch of individualism in your propaganda. I keep hearing a whole bunch of selfish interests in your narrative about interracial marriage. What about us, bruh? What about us? What about the best interests of the black community? Does that not matter to you, dark skin Shannon Sharp? Does that not matter to you? Dark-skinned Chad Ochocinco Johnson. Are you meaning to tell me you don't see this vast transfer of wealth that's taking place in the black community every time a black man marries a non-black woman and especially when a celebrity black man marries a non-black woman? Are you two intelligent black men trying to tell me you don't notice the great transfer of wealth that takes place in the black community when a white snow bunny decides to divorce her celebrity black husband? Come on, brothers. I know you're more intelligent than that. I know you more intelligent than that. I know you more intelligent than that. And then Shannon, you also said, in reference to Day, Tay Diggs, in reference to Tay Diggs, let's go to Tay Diggs for a minute. Let's go to Tay Diggs for a minute. And I'm going to shout Tay Diggs out. I'm going to shout Tay Diggs out. And you know why I'm going to shout Tay Diggs out? And by the way, the best man one, best man two, best man series. That's one of my favorite right here. That's one of my favorite right here. I'm just going to let y'all know. 
If I ha if I could only watch a handful of movies the rest of my life, Best Man One, Best Man Two, and then the little mini series they did. That's one of the movies I'm watching. But Tay Diggs was married to a Jewish woman. And Idina Menzel, Tay Diggs married a snow bunny, Idina Menzel, in 2003 or thereabout. 2003 and thereabout. And so this snow bunny and Tay Diggs divorced after 10 to 11 years of marriage. They divorced after 10 to 11 years of marriage and they fathered and mothered a beautiful 14 year old son. Shout out to the young African brother. I hope he's being raised as an African. Tay Diggs, I hope you're raising your son as a black man. I hope you're not letting that untouchable. I hope you're not letting that untouchable. I hope you're not letting that untouchable raise your son with some kind of multicultural biracial consciousness, which does not exist anywhere on the planet. That 14 year old boy is a black man, Tay Diggs, and I hope you raising your son as a black man. Now, Chad and Shannon's conversation grew from comments Miss Idina Menzel. Tay Diggs' ex-wife, a bunny, comments that she made about their marriage and why it ended. According to Snow Bunny Idina, she said, quote, it seemed like there was a lot of disappointment in the black community with Tay Diggs because he was married to a little white Jewish girl. I'm going to repeat that. These are her words, not mine. She said, it seems like there was a lot of disappointment in the community with him because he was married to a little white Jewish girl. Mrs. Menzel. Do you blame the black community for taking issue with the fact that one of its most successful black men chose to go outside of the community for his spouse? Are you trying to tell me you don't understand why the black community had an issue with your privileged white ass, Marion Tay Diggs? Are you that naive, Mrs. Menzel? Or did your white privilege or did your untouchable privilege did your snow bunny privilege kick in and was your ego bruised did you have an ego bruising by the fact that you thought your white privileged dictated that black people couldn't take an issue with tay diggs being married to you was that your real issue Mrs. Menzel, was your real issue the fact that you thought black people didn't have a right to express disagreement with the fact that Tay Diggs decided to marry a privileged white woman of the untouchable community? I want to go back to Chad for a minute. Brother Chad Ochocinco. Brother Chad Ochocinco. I did a little digging. Respectfully, my brother, respectfully. No shots under the belt. We being respectful here. But my brother, Chad, I did a little digging. I did a little digging. And I found out that you used to date a woman by the name of you may have been married. I don't mind men's relationship business, so I wouldn't know your business. I'm too busy with my own business. It's called African liberation. But you were once dating or married to a 47-year-old woman named Evelyn Lozada. I hope I'm pronouncing Sister Evelyn's name correctly. But Chad Ochocinco Johnson used to date 47-year-old basketball wives star Evelyn Lozada. Now, let me read a little something about Evelyn Lozada, Chad, because you said love is love 
And why are we still stuck on this as if racism is a thing of the past? And since you think that racism is a thing of the past, since you think that racism is a thing of the past, Brother Chad, you didn't say that exactly, but that's what your words tend to suggest. I got to come out with the with the crown because I'm about to go in one time. So, Brother Chad Ochocinco Johnson, since you think racism is a thing of the past and we still stuck, maybe you can explain to me why your ex-girlfriend or wife, Evelyn Lozada, was still stuck on anti-black bigotry of her own. Let me read this real quick. Reality television celebrates privilege of all types. Audiences are caught between a rock and a hypocritical hard place, praising the bad girl behavior that often drives the show ratings. 47-year-old basketball wives star Evelyn Lozada is the perfect example of pretty privilege gone wrong. Are you listening, Brother Chad? Are you listening, Brother Chad? I'm talking about your ex. 47-year-old basketball wives star Evelyn Lozada is the perfect example of pretty privilege gone wrong. Since her introduction to the VH1 series back in 2010, because of her 10-year relationship as a former fiancé to NBA superstar Antoine Walker, Evelyn Lozada has consistently fought, bullied, ridiculed, and shamed her, her cast mates. As one of the original cast members on the Basketball Wives show, Evelyn Lozada has waged war against any newbie who didn't bow down and kiss the ring. Evelyn Lozada has spewed racist insults. Chad Ochocinco, you got some explaining to do. Chad Ochocinco, you got some explaining to do. Chad Ochocinco Johnson, you got some explaining to do. I'm going to continue. If the incessant and hateful bickering isn't enough, Evelyn Lozada has committed some of the same colorist infractions that have landed her reality colleagues in hot water. In September of 2019, Evelyn Lozada posted a message on Instagram with a laughing orangutan. Let me repeat that. Back in 2019, Evelyn Lozada posted a message on Instagram with a laughing orangutan with the caption, everyone boycott this trash box. You are disgusting. Nobody watches you harder than the people that can't stand you. It didn't take a rocket scientist to realize she was referring to her castmate Ogum O.G. Chijindu, who is of African descent. You posted a picture of an orangutan. Chad Johnson, your ex-girlfriend, posted a picture of of an orangutan. Now you're not responsible for what she does, Chad, but you were responsible for dating a woman with clear anti-black bigoted beliefs and feelings. Let me continue. But she insisted that it had nothing to do with her skin tone. That was a lie. She defended her words towards OG numerous times, including a candid towards OG interview in 2021 with infamous blogger Love B. Scott and she said quote Evelyn Lozada said quote I will just say I have treated this person how I have treated her because I don't like her and that has nothing to do with the shade of her skin or her race that is a lie because if it hadn't if the way you treated that African woman if the way you treated my Nigerian sister had nothing to do with the shade of her skin or her race, you would have never posted an orangutan. If the way you treated her had nothing to do with the shade of her skin or her race, you would have never posted an orangutan. And then you went on to say, if you look at the facts here, the only person bringing up color and race in a derogatory, divisive, and destructive way is her. Evelyn, you, you were being disingenuous. 
Evelyn, you were being disingenuous. Evelyn, you were being disingenuous. You posted an orangutan. You posted an orangutan, a monkey, a beast, an animal in referring to that black woman. Evelyn later referred to a fellow OG castmate, Jackie Christie, as a cockroach. This is the woman you were dating, Chad Ochocinco Johnson, because you want to know why we still stuck. But you dated a woman who was clearly stuck on anti-black racism, Chad Ochocinco. You said, why are we still stuck on this in 2023? But you clearly dated a woman and may have been married to her, although you're no longer with her now. You clearly dated a woman who had anti-black bigoted feelings and you continue to date her and you may have even married her, my good brother. So don't talk about why black people still stuck on race when you were married to a racist. Don't talk about why black people are still stuck on race when you were married to a racist. Don't talk about why black people still stuck on race when you were married to a racist, brother Chad. Now let's continue. Your ex-girlfriend, Evelyn Lozado, called her castmate Jackie Christie a cockroach during an argument. And yet in another BBW verbal altercation, she referred to C.C. Guterres as Ling Ling. Initially, she insisted the term wasn't used as a racial slur. However, after being admonished by Black Twitter, she acquiesced and apologized, stating she never meant to hurt anyone and was deeply sorry. She has since shared that she identifies as an Afro-Latino. How convenient when your ass is under fire. So after calling people monkeys and after calling people cockroaches, she now wants the world to know that she identifies as an Afro-Latino. Kind of reminds me of Erica Mina a couple weeks ago. Kind of reminds me of Erica Mina a couple weeks ago. Kind of reminds me of Erica Mina a couple weeks ago, who called a co star a monkey for which she was fired. And Sister Erica Mina happens to be Puerto Rican and Dominican. And your ex girlfriend or ex wife, Chad, Miss Evelyn Lozado, was a 47 year old Puerto Rican. And I by no means am claiming that all of my Afro Puerto Rican sisters harbor anti-black sentiment. But as someone who grew up in a Puerto Rican neighborhood and lived around Puerto Ricans for a long time, if I'm going to be absolutely honest here, a lot of Puerto Ricans of African descent have very strong anti-black beliefs, very strong anti-black feelings and very strong anti-black behavior. If we're going to call a spade, we're going to call it a spade. So you were dating a racist Afro-Latino who clearly does not identify as black. But before I let you go, brother Chad, because I'm about done with you, before I let you go, brother Chad, because I'm about done with you, before I let you go, brother Chad, because I'm about done with you, before I let you go, brother Chad, because I'm about done with you, you're currently married to another woman of Latino descent. Shout out to all my Afro-Latino queens who identify with the African race, which takes nothing away from your Latina ethnicity. It takes nothing away from your Puerto Rican nationality. It takes nothing away from your Dominican Republic nationality. It takes nothing away from your Cuban nationality. But Cuban, Puerto Rican, and Dominican are not races. They are nationalities. There is no Puerto Rico before 1521. There is no Puerto Rico before 1521. There's no place in the world called Puerto Rico before 1521. So you clearly have a racial heritage that predates the island called Puerto Rico. And for those Puerto Ricans who proudly identify with the African family and are still allowed to be proud Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, and Cubans, they're still allowed to be proud Latinos and Latinas, I salute you. But for you anti-black Afro-Latinos who hate the African blood in your veins, you can respectfully go to hell. But Chad, before I let you go, Chad Ochocinco, before I let you go, Chad Ochocinco, before I let you go, 
you're with another Latina, another light-skinned Latina. And I'm not going to discriminate because African is African, whether they are African vanilla or African lemonade or African pina colada or African fudge. But I am pointing out, Brother Chad, that you seem to love light-skinned Latina women. Your current queen, much respect to Sister Sherelle Rosado, much respect to our sister Sherelle Rosado. She is a mixed race Afro-Latino. She has a white father and a black mother. She has a white father and a black mother. She has a white father and a black mother. Now, I don't know if the father is a white Latino or the mother is a black Latino. I don't know if the father is a white Latino. I don't know if the mother is a black Latina. But brother Chad, I want to ask you a question and then I'm going to get off of you. Brother Chad, I'm going to ask you a question and then I'm going to get off. Brother Chad Ocho Cinco Johnson, I'm going to ask you a question and then I'm going to get off of that. And that is this, my dear brother. Why do you seem to have a preference for light skinned Latina or mixed race women? Why do you seem to have that preference? As a pan Africanist, I don't care where the black woman comes from. I don't care if she's Puerto Rican, as long as she's proud to be African. I don't care if she's Dominican Republic, as long as she's proud to be African. I don't care if she's Cuban, if, as long as she's proud to be African. I don't care if she's Panamanian, Angolian, Nigerian, Texan, Pennsylvanian, New Yorkian. It don't make a difference to me as long as she is African affirming in her identity. But Evelyn Lozado clearly was not someone who was neither proud or who chose to identify with her African heritage. That's clear by the way she attacked black women. So your ex, clearly, your ex-girl, ex-wife, Evelyn Lozado, she clearly had no affinity for her African heritage. Brother Chad, and I don't know the answer to this, I'm just asking. Your current wife, Sherelle Rosado, does she identify with the African race or does she identify with her white daddy? I'm just asking a question because I'm having a problem with you, sir, who is wondering why black people still stuck on loyalty to the community. Chad Ochocinco Johnson is worried why black people are still stuck on loyalty to the community. But brother Chad, you still stuck on light skin, black women from other countries, which is fine as a Pan-Africanist. But to me, it looks like you discriminate against all black women and you prefer light skin, Latino or mixed race women. So why are you so stuck on light skin women? Why are you so stuck on Latino women? Why are you so stuck on mixed race women, my dear brother Chad Ocho Cinco Johnson. I would like you to answer that at some point. Now, some of you are going to say, some of you are going to say that Chad and Shannon have children with black women. Some of you are going to say Chad and Shannon have children with black women, so they clearly don't have a snow bunny bias, even though Shannon dates nothing but snow bunnies. Some of you are going to argue that they don't have a snow bunny privilege, excuse me, a snow bunny bias. Chad doesn't have a light skinned Latina bias because he got children with black women. Shannon has children with black women. So he clearly don't have a preference for snow bunnies, even though that's all he dates. Well, I got news for you. That argument is useless and futile. Do you know why? Why is the argument that Chad and Shannon have children with black women? Why does that not disqualify them as being light skinned supremacists or snow bunny supremacists? You know why? Thomas Jefferson had a whole plantation of children by black women. 
It didn't stop him from being a racist. I said Thomas Jefferson had a whole plantation of black children with black women. George Washington had a whole plantation of black children with black women. So what are we talking about? Don't we have racist Southern Republicans who fathered black children with black women? Did that stop them from being racist? Did that stop them from being the bigot? Did that stop them from being white supremacist? So don't come to me and say just because a black man had children with a black woman, black women, that means that they don't prefer light skin or white skin. You Negroes are out of your mind. You Negroes are out of your mind. You Negroes are out of your mind. Thomas Jefferson had a whole plantation of children with black women. George Washington had a whole plantation of children with black women. Just because you laid down and made a baby with a black woman does not mean you don't think light skin is better. And it does not mean you don't think white women are better. Cut the nonsense out. Cut the nonsense out. I want to come to Tay Diggs for a minute. I want to come back to Tay Diggs for a minute. First of all, Tay Diggs, I salute you. I salute Tay Diggs. You know why? Because you are one of the few black male celebrities who canceled your Snow Bunny contract. I said I salute Tay Diggs because you are one of the few black male celebrities who woke up to your African consciousness and decided to cancel your Snow Bunny contract. I said, I salute Tay Diggs. I salute you, brother, because you are one of the few black male celebrities who woke up to the hell you were. You deactivated your Willie Lynch chip on your own and you canceled your Snow Bunny contract. So Tay Diggs, I salute you, but I have a question. Tay Diggs, I have a question. Tay Diggs, even though you canceled your Snow Bunny contract, you are now with the beautiful Afro-Asian sister by the name of April Jones. Much respect to my Afro-Asian sister, 33-year-old April Jones. So Tay Diggs, you're kind of in the same spectrum with Chad Ochocinco. Now, to Chad's credit, both of his women were Afro-Latina, although the first one clearly didn't identify, so he gets a strikeout on that, and I'm waiting to hear back from Chad as to whether or not his current beautiful wife identifies as African or not, because if she doesn't, he struck out twice, because in the world of revolutionary pan-Africanism, you must be biologically African and psychologically African. In the world of pan-Africanism, you must be biologically African and psychologically African. I said in the world of pan-Africanism, you must be biologically African and psychologically African. Now, Evelyn Lozada was without question biologically African. But Evelyn Lozada was by no means psychologically African. Eric Amina was biologically African. But by no means was she psychologically African. And I'm wondering if Brother Chad's current beautiful wife, Sister Sherelle Rosado, much respect to her. Okay. Much respect to Sister Sherelle. I'm wondering if she is both biologically African and psychological. Her mother's black, so she's definitely biologically African, but is she psychologically African? So Tay Diggs, I want to ask you the same question. Tay Diggs, I want to ask you the same question. Tay Diggs, I want to ask Tay Diggs is Sister April Jones, a beautiful woman. No disrespect to none of your women. Sister Tay Diggs, excuse me, Brother Tay Diggs, Brother Tay Diggs, is Sister April a psychologically identifying African? Does she identify with African people 
Or is she running around telling people she Chinese or Japanese or Korean? I'm not sure what her other racial heritage is. I'm not sure which Asian nationality she descends from. But I'm wondering whether or not she is psychologically African. Because if you tell me that woman is not psychologically African when she's clearly black, clearly black, you can see the Asian imprint, but she's clearly black. But Tay Diggs, if I find out that our beautiful sister April isn't psychologically African, then you struck out. Why divorce a snow bunny only to marry a mixed race sister who doesn't want to be black? Tay Diggs, why marry a snow bunny only to marry a mix? Excuse me. Why divorce a snow bunny to only turn around and marry a mixed race sister who doesn't want to be black? So Tay Diggs, you got a few more questions you got to answer as well. Let me come back to my big brother, Snow Bunny, Shannon Sharp. Let me come back to my big brother, Snow Bunny, Shannon Sharp. Let me come back to my big brother, Snow Bunny, Shannon. Shannon, wait, I got it. Wait, before I go to Shannon, Chad, I forgot something Chad said. I forgot something Chad said, but let me check something before I say this. Chad Ochocinco, you said, quote, when speaking with Shannon, Chad Ochocinco said, when I buy a pack of Skittles, Brother Chad, you said, when I buy a pack of Skittles, you said, when I buy a pack of Skittles, I don't pick and choose which ones I'm going to eat. When I buy a pack of Skittles, I don't pick which ones I'm going to eat. When I buy a pack of Skittles, I don't pick which ones I'm going to eat. Brother Chad. What the hell does Trayvon Martin Skittles, what in the hell does Trayvon Martin Skittles, what in the hell does Trayvon Martin Skittles, the color of Skittles, got to do with you being loyal to African women? What does that have to do with it? And furthermore, Chad, if you're telling me color doesn't matter in your dating choices, Chad Ochocinco, you say you are as colorblind with women as you are with the Skittles in the pack. So, brother Chad, if you are just as colorblind in the selection of women as you are in the selection of the Skittles you eat. Have you ever married a black woman who was your same complexion? I'm just asking a question. Brother Chad Ochocinco Johnson. You claim that you are as unconcerned about skin tone as you are about the colors of the Skittles that you eat. If that is true, have you ever married a woman who is your complexion or darker? I think we know the answer. So can we please cut out the bullshit? Let me come back to Shannon one time. And again, I respect both of my brothers. These are not personal attacks. We're dealing with the psychological state of black men. And while black men don't feel that they need to be obligated to black women, while black men don't feel they need to be loyal to black women, because guess what? Guess what, family? Guess what, family? Guess what? 95% of white men marry white women. Let me say it again. Let me say it again. Let me say it again for the people who don't hear me in the back. 95% of white men marry white women. Let me say it one more time for the people in the back. Let me say it one more time for the people in the back. 95% of white People marry white people, but 25% of black men marry non-black women. Wow, look at that. One in four black men will marry someone who's not black. See how the white man sticks with his? 
See how the white man, yeah, he go dating non-white women, but it's not an epidemic like it is in our community. Yeah, the white man, he marries out the race sometimes, but it's not an epidemic like it is in our community. 95% of white men marry white women. 25% of black men marry non-black women. And when we control for income, the more money the black man makes, the more likely he will end up marrying a non-black woman. And the black man marries outside of his community more than all other men in America put together. Let me say this again. Let me say this again. Black men in America marry outside their race more than all other men in America put together as a percentage of your demographic in society. You really want me to believe that your racial inferiority complex plays no role in your selection of mates? Brother Chad, respectfully, brother, because I like Brother Chad. I was a fan of yours when you played. But Brother Chad, do you really want me to believe that your dark skin had nothing to do with why you pursued light-skinned Latino women to be your wives? Do you really think I'm that stupid? You're dealing with a psychologist, bro. This is what I do. I analyze human behavior for a living. I've studied it my entire life. Do you really think I'm silly enough to think that your dark skin had nothing to do with why you pursued light-skinned Latina women to be your wives? Shannon Sharp, you are too intelligent. Shannon Sharp. You are too intelligent, Shannon Sharp, if you, for me to believe, for you to think I'm going to believe that your dark skin has nothing to do with why you only date white women. You are too intelligent to think I'm going to believe that crap. You and I know, Chad and I know, know, we all know that your dark skin color and how you've been treated as a result of your dark skin color. I said, your dark skin color, Shannon. Your dark skin color, Chad. And I belong on the same spectrum, but I happen to be proud of mine and I don't date out my race. But your dark skin color has a big reason to do with why Chad pursues light skin and why Shannon only dates pale skin. Uh-huh. There's a psychological defense mechanism that was articulated by the European father of white psychology, Sigmund Freud. There was a psychological defense mechanism that was articulated by the European father of white psychology. And it was called projection. Let me tell you what projection is. This is a psychological defense mechanism. Projection involves individuals attributing their own unacceptable thoughts, feelings, and motives to another person. It's called projection. Chad, Shannon, Terrell Owens, and all other black men, especially celebrities who only date non-black women, you are projecting your self-hate onto black women. These allegations that black women called you ugly when you were a kid, these allegations that black girls didn't want to be bothered with you when you were in high school, I'm not so sure that they were true. And even if they are true, you had some feelings of self-hatred and insecurity yourself. And you are projecting onto black women what you feel about yourself. I said you are projecting onto black women what you feel about yourself. I said you are projecting onto black women what you feel about yourself. Uh-huh. So let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Because see, Shannon said he thinks Tay Diggs allowed the black community to make decisions for him. Well, guess what, Shannon? 
Are you not aware, Brother Shannon, that in every other culture, in every other community, are you not aware, Brother Shannon, that in every other culture, in every other community, are you not aware, Brother Shannon, that in every other culture and every other community, people's decisions are influenced by how it affects their community? Did you know that, Shannon, that in the white community, people's decisions are affected by how they affect other white people in the Asian community. People's decisions are affected by how they affect other Asian people in the untouchable community. People's decisions are affected by how they affect other people in the Arab community. People's de decisions are affected by how they affect people in their community. Only in the black community, Mr. Shannon Sharp. Only in the black community, Mr. Shannon Sharp, only in the black community, Mr. Shannon Sharp, do we make decisions without taking into account how it affects other black people. So when you make ridiculous statements like. Brother Shannon Sharp, respectfully, when you make ridiculous statements like I think he allowed the community to make the decisions for him, you don't understand how community works, Snow Bunny Shannon. Snow Bunny Shannon, you don't understand how the community works. Community is a compound word. It means common unity. Community is a compound word. It means Common unity. That's what community means, Shannon Sharp. I respect Tay Diggs that he took into account how his community felt about him marrying a privileged white woman. I appreciate Tay Diggs for being affected by that. The problem, Mr. Shannon Sharp, is the fact that you are completely dedicated to white women who you know only date you because you are rich and famous. Shannon Sharp, there's no way under God's heaven you're going to convince me that you don't know the white women you date are only dating you because you are rich and you are famous. And the sad thing about it, the sad thing about it, the sad thing about it is you are willing. Many of you rich black men, celebrities in particular, you are willing to risk your financial success just to sleep around with white women. And that, sir, is a damn shame and a crime against African ancestors. But before I move on, I want to ask... Chad, Terrell, and Shannon, and all other bunny hoppers in our community. Before I move on, I want to ask Terrell Owens, Chad Ochocinco Johnson, and Shannon Sharp a few clarifying questions. I want to go back to the black girls called y'all ugly in school, and that traumatized you so much that you're dating black white women in your 40s. All due respect, gentlemen. That sounds like a bunch of, as Shannon would say, bull jive. That sounds like a bunch of, as Shannon would say, bull jive. That sounds like a bunch of, as Shannon would say, bull jive. So you mean to tell me you were so traumatized by black girls calling you dark and ugly in grade school. You were so traumatized by black women calling you dark and ugly in grade school that you just had to date white women. So let me ask you brothers a question. Chad, you are from Miami. Shannon, you are from the South. Terrell Owens, let me see where you're from. Let me, where's Terrell Owens from? Where's Terrell Owens from? See, we're we, we going to get to the bottom of this tonight. I love my brothers. Don't get me wrong. They're my brothers. I'm still waiting for a donation check for FDMG from all of them. I'm still waiting for a do. Where's Terrell Owens from? Terrell Owens. Let me see. Here. Terrell Owens is from Mississippi. No, I don't think that's correct. Let me find it. Y'all be making up stuff. Terrell Owens is from Alabama. 
I don't know if that's his birth city, but he went to high school in Alabama and he went to college in Tennessee. Terrell Owens went to high school in Alabama and college in Tennessee. Terrell Owens, and we hope you get well, my brother. Terrell Owens, I hope you get well. You went to high school in Alabama and college in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Shannon, let me double check Shannon. Let me double check Shannon Sharp. Brother Shannon is from Georgia and you went to Savannah State. So you from Georgia. Chad is from Miami, the South. Terrell went to high school in Alabama, college in racist ass Tennessee. And Shannon Sharp, you're from the South. All three of you dark skinned black men are from the South. I have a question. I have a question. All three of my dark skinned brothers are from the South. All three of them. Dark skinned Terrell Owens is from the South. Dark skinned Chad Ochocinco is from the South. Dark skinned Shannon Sharp is from the South. I'm dark skinned too. So let me ask you brothers a question. You mean to tell me you are more traumatized by black girls calling you dark and ugly in grade school? Then you were by white girls calling you the N word. Are you telling me you were more traumatized by dark by black girls calling you dark and ugly than you were by white girls calling you the N word and white people calling you the N word and white boys calling you the N word? I smell a lie. Somebody is not being honest. Somebody is not being honest. You are not going to tell me that black girls calling you ugly traumatized you more than black and white girls, excuse me, than white boys and girls calling you the N word. You're not going to convince me that you were more traumatized by black girls calling you ugly than you were by white boys and white girls and white people treating you in racially discriminatory ways, discriminating against you, being bigoted towards you and calling it N-word. If you were being honest, you were more traumatized by the white girls than the black girls. If you Negroes were being honest, you were more traumatized by the white girls than the black girls. If you Negroes were being honest, you were more traumatized by the white girls calling you the N word than the black girls calling you dark and ugly. If you agree with me in the chat right now, can I get some fists from my brothers and some hearts from my queens? Who is agreeing with the psychological analysis of the Prince of Pan-Africanism right now? Ain't no way in hell Terrell Owens, Shannon Sharp, and Chad Ochocinco Johnson were more traumatized by black girls calling them ugly than white boys and girls calling them the N-word. Use a damn lie. I used to live in North Carolina for a couple years. I was only there for about three years. And in three years, I had a principal twist my arm and throw me up against the ground. He threw me up against the outside. He threw me up against the school wall onto the ground. And I remember when I used to have two white playmates who lived across the street from us, their white father came across the street. I was only seven years old. Their white father came across the street, knocked on my door and told my father to keep my black ass away from his house and away from his children. And I was only there for three years. I only lived in the South for three years. You ninjas lived down there your whole childhood and college. And you're trying to tell me that you were more traumatized by black girls calling you ugly than white people calling you the N-word. That's a damn lie. And y'all know it. That's a damn lie. And y'all know it. That's a damn lie. And y'all know it. Let me ask y'all a question. This is to all dark skinned black men who date outside the race. This is to all black men, regardless of color, who date outside the race. Does your complexion, 
have anything to do with your preference? Is it possible you hate how you look so much you can't stand to be next to it in your bedroom? Is it possible you hate how you look so much you can't stand to be next to it in the bedroom? I'm asking a question. Is it possible you hate your beautiful, dark, richly melanated skin so much that you can't stand to be next to it in your bedroom? Does your complexion have something to do with the women that you date? So let me get this right. Black girls called you ugly. So do you want me to believe that the white girls called you handsome? The black girls called you ugly. So you want me to believe that the white girls called you handsome? If the black girls called you ugly, I'm damn sure the white girls didn't call you handsome. Because guess who taught the black girls that dark skin was ugly? The white girls taught them that. So if the black girls called you ugly, I can only imagine what the white girls called you. So stop making excuses for your bunny hopping and just admit you hate yourself. And that's why you're dating and marrying outside the race. Now. Shannon, you have an oh, I'm giving you an open invitation to come on your station or we can do virtual. Shannon Sharp, we can do virtual and you can bring all the bunny hopping brothers from the NFL retired and active. You can bring all the bunny hopping brothers from the NBA, all of you versus me. I'm going to intellectually assassinate the whole squad. That's an open invitation for my, my big brother, Snow Bunny Shannon Sharp, who I love and respect. Come on back, people. They stopped my live. They interrupted my live, brothers and sisters. Come on back in. They interrupted my live because I was going too deep. They interrupted my live. I'm going to redo this whole thing on DrUmar.tv, so make sure you go and subscribe. They keep sabotaging my life. Mark Zuckerberg, I would greatly appreciate it if you stop sabotaging my life. Mark Zuckerberg, I would greatly appreciate it if you stop sabotaging my life. I'm going to redo this live on drumar.tv. So make sure you go register at www. D-R-U-M-A-R dot TV. Make sure you go register at www dot D-R-U-M-A-R dot TV. Make sure you go register at www dot D-R-U-M-A-R TV. They cut my live off. Mark Zuckerberg cut my live, but let me continue. Snow Bunny Shannon said he thinks Tay Diggs allowed the black community to make decisions for him. Well, guess what, Shannon? Are you not aware, Brother Shannon, that in every other culture, in every other community? Are you not aware, Brother Shannon, that in every other culture, in every other community? Are you not aware, Brother Shannon, that in every other culture and every other community, people's decisions are influenced by how it affects their community? Did you know that, Shannon, that in the white community, people's decisions are affected by how they affect other white people? In the Asian community, People's decisions are affected by how they affect other Asian people in the untouchable community. People's decisions are affected by how they affect other people in the Arab community. People's de decisions are affected by how they affect people in their community. Only in the black community, Mr. Shannon Sharp. Only in the black community, Mr. Shannon Sharp. Only in the black community, Mr. Shannon Sharp, 
do we make decisions without taking into account how it affects other black people? So when you make ridiculous statements like Brother Shannon Sharp, respectfully, when you make ridiculous statements like I think he allowed the community to make the decisions for him, you don't understand how community works, Snow Bunny Shannon. Snow Bunny Shannon, you don't understand how the community works. Community is a compound word. It means common unity. Community is a compound word. It means common unity. That's what community means, Shannon Sharp. I respect Tay Diggs that he took into account how his community felt about him marrying a privileged white woman. I appreciate Tay Diggs for being affected by that. The problem, Mr. Shannon Sharp, is the fact that you are completely dedicated to white women who you know only date you because you are rich and famous. Shannon Sharp, there's no way under God's heaven you're going to convince me that you don't know the white women you date are only dating you because you are rich and you are famous. And the sad thing about it, the sad thing about it, the sad thing about it is you are willing. Many of you rich black men, celebrities in particular, you are willing to risk your financial success just to sleep around with white women. And that, sir, is a damn shame and a crime against African ancestors. But before I move on, I want to ask Chad, Terrell, and Shannon, and all other bunny hoppers in our community. Before I move on, I want to ask Terrell Owens, Chad Ochocinco Johnson, and Shannon Sharp a few clarifying questions. I want to go back to the black girls called y'all ugly in school and that traumatized you so much that you're dating black white women in your 40s. All due respect, gentlemen, that sounds like a bunch of, as Shannon would say, bull jive. That sounds like a bunch of, as Shannon would say, bull job. That sounds like a bunch of, as Shannon would say, bull job. So you mean to tell me you were so traumatized by black girls calling you dark and ugly in grade school. You were so traumatized by black women calling you dark and ugly in grade school that you just had to date white women. So let me ask you brothers a question. Chad, you are from Miami. Shannon, you are from the South. Terrell Owens, let me see where you're from. Let me, where's Terrell Owens from? Where's Terrell Owens from? See, we, we, we're going to get to the bottom of this tonight. I love my brothers. Don't get me wrong. They're my brothers. I'm still waiting for a donation check for FDMG from all of them. I'm still waiting for a do. Where's Terrell Owens from? Terrell Owens. Let me see him. Why oh, my phone taking so long to load? One second, family. One second, family. Terrell Owens is from Mississippi. No, I don't think that's correct. Let me find it. Y'all be making up stuff. Terrell Owens is from Alabama. I don't know if that's his birth city, but he went to high school in Alabama and he went to college in Tennessee. Terrell Owens went to high school in Alabama and college in Tennessee. Terrell Owens, and we hope you get well, my brother. Terrell Owens, I hope you get well. You went to high school in Alabama and college in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Shannon, let me double check Shannon. Let me double check Shannon Sharp. Brother Shannon is from Georgia and you went to Savannah State. So you from Georgia. Chad is from Miami, the South. 
Terrell went to high school in Alabama, college in racist ass Tennessee. And Shannon Sharp, you're from the South. All three of you dark skinned black men are from the South. I have a question. I have a question. All three of my dark skinned brothers are from the South. All three of them. Dark skinned Terrell Owens is from the South. Dark skinned Chad Ochocinco is from the South. Dark skinned Shannon Sharp is from the South. I'm dark skinned too. So let me ask you brothers a question. You mean to tell me you were more traumatized by black girls calling you dark and ugly in grade school than you were by white girls calling you the N-word? Are you telling me you were more traumatized by darks by black girls calling you dark and ugly than you were by white girls calling you the N-word and white people calling you the N-word and white boys calling you the N-word? I smell a lie. Somebody is not being honest. Somebody is not being honest. You are not going to tell me that black girls calling you ugly traumatized you more than black and white girls, excuse me, than white boys and girls calling you the N-word. You're not going to convince me that you were more traumatized by black girls calling you ugly than you were by white boys and white girls and white people treating you in racially discriminatory ways, discriminating against you, being bigoted towards you and calling it in word. If you were being honest, you were more traumatized by the white girls than the black girls. If you Negroes were being honest, you were more traumatized by the white girls than the black girls. If you Negroes were being honest, you were more traumatized by the white girls calling you the N-word than the black girls calling you dark and ugly. If you agree with me in the chat right now, can I get some fists from my brothers and some hearts from my queens? If y'all agree with me right now, can I get some fists from my brothers and some hearts from my queens? If y'all agree with me right now, who is agreeing with the psychological analysis of the Prince of Pan-Africanism right now? Ain't no way in hell. Terrell Owens, Shannon Sharp, and Chad Ochocinco Johnson were more traumatized by black girls calling them ugly than white boys and girls calling them the N-word. Use a damn lie. I used to live in North Carolina for a couple years. I was only there for about three years. And in three years, I had a principal twist my arm and throw me up against the ground. He threw me up against the outside. He threw me up against the school wall onto the ground. And I remember when I used to have two white playmates who lived across the street from us, their white father came across the street. I was only seven years old. Their white father came across the street, knocked on my door and told my father to keep my black ass away from his house and away from his children. And I was only there for three years. I only lived in the South for three years. You ninjas lived down there your whole childhood and college, and you're trying to tell me that you were more traumatized by black girls calling you ugly than white people calling you the N-word. That's a damn lie, and y'all know it. That's a damn lie, and y'all know it. That's a damn lie, and y'all know it. Let me ask y'all a question. This is to all dark skinned black men who date outside the race. This is to all black men, regardless of color, who date outside the race. Does your complexion have anything to do with your preference? Is it possible you hate how you look so much you can't stand to be next to it in your bedroom? Is it possible you hate how you look so much you can't stand to be next to it in the bedroom. I'm asking a question. Is it possible you hate your beautiful, dark, richly melanated skin so much that you can't stand to be next to it in your bedroom? 
does your complexion have something to do with the women that you date? So let me get this right. Black girls called you ugly. So do you want me to believe that the white girls called you handsome? The black girls called you ugly. So you want me to believe that the white girls called you handsome? If the black girls called you ugly, I'm damn sure the white girls didn't call you handsome. Because guess who taught the black girls that dark skin was ugly? The white girls taught them that. So if the black girls called you ugly, I can only imagine what the white girls called you. So stop making excuses for your bunny hopping and just admit you hate yourself. And that's why you're dating and marrying outside the race. Now, Shannon, you have an oh, I'm giving you an open invitation to come on your station, or we can do virtual. Shannon Sharp, we can do virtual, and you can bring all the bunny hopping brothers from the NFL, retired and active. You can bring all the bunny hopping brothers from the NBA, all of you versus me. I'm going to intellectually assassinate the whole squad. That's an open invitation for my, my big brother, Snow Bunny Shannon Sharp, who I love and respect. Now, I'm going to get off Tay Diggs. I'm going to get off Chad Ochocinco. I'm going to get off Shannon. I'm going to get off Terrell Owens. I'm going to get off my dark-skinned bunny hopping brothers, and I want to talk about that movie I saw tonight. I'm going to tie all this in. Are y'all still with me? I, I need some feedback. Are y'all still with me? Because see, when I come, I come hard. This is Intercontinental Ifa Tune Day. This is the Notorious RBG. This is Ifa Tune Day three times. This is the Marcus Garvey Grenade. This is the most requested scholar. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism. Are y'all with me, African family? So we are back for the summary. Tonight's expose on the dangers of bunny hopping in the black community. We come to the conclusion on tonight's expose on the dangers of bunny hopping in the black community. See, when I say black queens forever, snow bunnies never. When I say black queens forever, snow bunnies never. When I say black queens forever, snow bunnies never. When I say black queens forever, snow bunnies never. Y'all take it as a joke. It's not a joke. It's a matter of life and death for the black community. Black queens forever, snow bunnies never is a matter of life and death for the black community. Black Queens Forever, Snow Bunnies Never is a matter of life and death for the black community. Now, I apologize that part one was removed from my page by Mark Zuckerberg. I apologize that the first of these three segments was removed from my Instagram by Mark Zuckerberg. But I'm pretty sure one of the YouTube and struggle streamers pirated off my page before Zuckerberg took it down. I'm pretty sure one of your YouTubian struggle streamers pirated my live before Zuckerberg took it down. So I'm sure you can find it on YouTube sometime tomorrow. So you can see part two. He didn't take part two down. This is part three. Part one, where I deal with Chad Ochocinco and Shannon Mark Zuckerberg struck that down, but I'm sure one of your YouTube and struggle streamers grabbed it off my live before Zuckerberg snatched it so you can get it off of Instagram, excuse me, off of YouTube tomorrow. So let me close. The migrants that are taking over our communities, the migrants that are taking over our communities, guess what? When the U.S. government starts announcing reparations for black people, 
the migrants are going to start marrying black people. Oh, yes. And more snow bunnies are going to start marrying black men. Oh, yes. And more snow puppies are going to start marrying black women. I promise you. When the U.S. government announces that reparations are going to be given to African Americans in the next couple years, you're going to see an interracial marriage explosion like you've never seen. When the U.S. government finally announces that they're going to give reparations to black people, you're going to see an interracial marriage explosion in America like you've never seen. Asians are going to start marrying black people. Migrants are going to be marrying black people, Latinos, East Indians, you name it. All the other races are going to start marrying black people. In fact, I would even argue, I would even argue that the reason we're seeing all these interracial couples on the cartoons and all these interracial couples on the commercials and all the interracial couples in the movies and all the interracial couples on TV. They're programming black people for interracial marriage. So when you get your reparations, it goes right to the other race. They're programming black people right now for interracial marriage. So when you get your reparations, it's going to the other people. They're programming Programming black America right now for interracial marriage. So as soon as you get your reparations, it's going to go right back to the other people. They're going to start killing you and poisoning you and putting poison in your COVID shot and putting poison in your insulin and putting poison in your kidney medicine. They're going to kill you off and take your damn reparations. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Brothers and sisters, as I get ready to close, thank you for being with me tonight from 1111 to 121. We did two hours tonight. That time went fast. We did two hours tonight. Make sure you go back and watch the whole thing. Share it with a friend. You two being struggle streamers are going to cut it up, slice it up and make money off of it and make no donations to FDMG. I said the YouTube and struggle streamers are going to snatch it off my Instagram, cut it up, slice it up, put it on a page, make money from my content and not donate a single dollar to FDMG. But nonetheless, the information got to get out. So I'm not worrying about that right now. Nonetheless, the information got to get out. So I'm not worrying about that. I want y'all to share this. Give it to every snow bunny you know, every snow bunny hopper in the community. Take them to the movies. Go see it tomorrow. But I'm telling you, if black America does not stop this interracial crisis, if y'all don't stop this bunny hopping, we are going to end up paying dearly for this. And our children are going to end up paying dearly for this. And our grandchildren are going to end up paying dearly for this. Clifton, New Jersey, Sunday morning. Jersey City protests against police brutality, Sunday afternoon. Nat Turner Land, November the 11th in Virginia. Go to natturnerlibrary.com. Chicago, Illinois, November the 16th. Norwood, Massachusetts, November the 30th. Omaha, Nebraska, December the 2nd. And we're looking at Kansas City, Kansas, December the 3rd. Where are all my Kansas City, Kansas Africans? Where are all my Kansas City, Missouri Africans? Where are my Kansas and Missouri Africans? I haven't seen you guys since 2016. I'm going to try to make it to Kansas City, Kansas or Kansas City, Missouri on Sunday, December the 3rd. I'm going to try to make it to Kansas City, Kansas or Kansas City, Missouri on Sunday, December the 3rd. So we need all of my Kansas, Missouri Africans to pull up for King Kong consciousness in Kansas City on Sunday, December the 3rd. This is your brother, King Kong consciousness. Hit the cash app. If you want a podcast interview, they are not free. If you want a podcast interview, they are not free. 
If you want a YouTube interview, they are not free. If you want an Instagram interview, they are not free. You can text me. Do not inbox me. I do not check Instagram inboxes. I do not check Instagram inboxes. I do not check Instagram inboxes. You can text me. 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858. International Africans, put a one in front, plus one. 215-989-9858. Plus one, two, one, five, nine, eight, nine, nine, eight, five, eight. And don't forget Memphis, Tennessee, Black Parent Boot Camp, Thanksgiving weekend. Memphis, Tennessee, where all my Tennessee Africans, Chattanooga, Memphis, Knoxville, Nashville, pull up the Memphis Thanksgiving weekend for the Black Parent Boot Camp. If you need the flyers, text my phone. Y'all know the number. I love y'all. Pan-Africanism of Parish. African people will win. Pray to God every day for liberation. Pull your libations to your ancestors so we can overcome. All for one and one for all. I am because we are. We are because I am. Peace and Pan-Africanism.